Here's how a knight moves on a chessboard. Two steps in one direction and one step in the perpendicular direction. So from this position, it can go here or here or here or any of these eight possible positions. Now here's a puzzle. Four knights are placed on a three by three grid. Can we find a way in which they can move from the positions shown in this initial state to the positions in this state? Let's try it out. Hmm, not quite there. Let's keep going. Still haven't reached the final state. And we are back to the starting position. Do you want to try this out? Make a 3x3 grid, try moving the knights, and I'll see you in a bit. Now, trying out manually isn't very efficient. We might get lucky and find a possible solution. But in case it's not possible, we just can't be sure, as there are so many ways to move these knights. Can we do better? Let's think about it mathematically. First, I'll number these squares from 1 to 9. So in the initial state, the white knights are on 1 and 3, and the black knights are on 7 and 9. And in the final state, the white knights are on 1 and 9, and the black ones are at 3 and 7. Now, let's represent this grid and the knight movements in a different way. So if a knight is at 1, it can move to 6 or 8. And we can say that 1 is connected to 6 and 8. Similarly, from 6, it can move to 7 or back to 1. From 7, it can go to 2, then 9, 4, 3, 8, and it's back to 1. And what we get is called a connected graph. By the way, we can't go to 5 from anywhere on this grid. So 5 won't be connected to any point. Let's keep it at the center. Now, let's bring in the knights. Here's how the initial positions would look on the graph. Whites on 1 and 3 and blacks on 7 and 9. Now, if I move this knight from 1 to 8 on the grid, this is how the graph would change. And if I move this one from 7 to 6, that's how the graph looks now. And similarly, any knight move on the grid is the same as moving it from one point on the graph to another connected point. So instead of moving the knights on the grid, we can do it directly on the graph. It's the same thing. Let's now also see what the final positions on the graph would look like. Whites on 1 and 9 and blacks on 3 and 7. So we can now forget the grids and simply use the graphs to get from the initial to the final state. Here's what they finally look like. Now let's make some moves on the graph in the initial state. 3 to 4, 9 to 2, 4 to 9. Are we there at the final state? Not quite. Maybe try this way. Nope. Now here's something to notice. In the initial state, the knights are placed in the order white, white, black, black. And in the final state, their order is white, black, white, black. Let's try making some moves from the initial state again. 1 to 6, 9 to 2, and 3 to 4. The order still remains white, white, black, black. And no matter how we move from the initial state, the order would always remain the same. White, white, black, black. But to change it to the final state requires a reordering of the knights to white, black, white, black. Is that possible? For this reordering to happen, two knights will have to cross each other somehow. For example, if this black knight, initially at position 7, wants to cross over the white knight at position 1 to slide between the two white knights, it would have to be at the same position as this white knight at some point. And that's not possible. Two knights cannot be on the same square on the grid at the same time. And therefore, going from the initial to the final state isn't possible. So, we see how representing the problem visually instantly tells us that this knight's repositioning is simply impossible, however hard we try. And that's the power of mathematical thinking. Now, do you want to try a similar puzzle? Can we move the knights from this position to that one? 